is that wherever you go in a foreign country, you're met by brothers because they're part of this musical fraternity that exists around the world. So you know that you're going to land in an airport where you've never been before and you're going to be picked up by the coolest cats you could ever meet. And they're going to show you the best places in town, they're going to show you the best clubs, they're going to take you to the best restaurants. Very cool city in Italy, in this part of Italy, three days. Freddy's was born out of around the dining table, I reckon, you know, Kai sharing, talking. But yeah, when you're, when you're over here, that becomes even more important because you stick together as a rōpū. You know? Pretty hardcore, first thing in the morning Something. was a raw alete and uh, raw squid and raw octopus and raw prawns. <laughs> I'm full. First thing for breakfast. First thing for breakfast. These guys are quite hardcore. <laughs> you are my frat, Freddy Stroh. You have to sing in Italian. So then you do it. Look for the meal. It's not so bad. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> These two are like rongoi for me, you know, just medicine. I don't think I would have been able to have come over for so long, I think, because, you know, there's certain um, things that take priority, I think. As much as I love the music and the band, and you know, there's something about whānau, you know. It's good and that it's, you're yeah. in a situation where you can kind of make them both work together. You know, that's oh, the best thing about man. Freddie's being such a a family operation. You know, it's just... this is a, this is a dream. We're actually yeah. living a dream right now because we're touring all over the world with our whānau, You know, not to rub it in anyone's faces or anything, but you know, it's oh, pretty good. Oh no, but it's more <laughs> like um, that it can be done. We're down here at the uh, Porto Tafito or um, or Monopoly. Monopoly. So we've just seen lots of fish loaded up and we're going to go home and have a whole lot cooked for us. Ah, go and have uh, heaps of this Italian kaimoana. Yeah. Ah. Mm. No, te, no te moana yeah, Adriatic. Or... Bon appetit. Bon <laughs> appetit. <laughs> you want to be going <laughs> fucking undersized at home, eh? <laughs> Jesus, throw that one back. <laughs> what do you call that? We'll need to bring that to the camp. The full gun life. We're the chefs. Yeah, the chefs. We're the chefs. <laughs> It's always been the rhythm maker for this band. Started off with turntables and then we moved to the sampler and have never left it. It's just um, led to do nice fat drum sounds, more sort of orientated to the club and it doesn't matter where you play, they're, they're always going to sound, you know, always going to sound... Um... <laughs> they're going to sound the same every gig. Doesn't matter how, you know, even if the PA is not so good, uh, you still get away with a good drum sound. <laughs> if we get a few days off, then we, we definitely try and set up in a spare room somewhere and uh, write some new music. If we get sort of uh, two or three days in a place, you're always going to walk away with two or three new rhythms. They're not going to be finished songs by no means, but some good beat ideas, some good bass lines, and then I'll kind of tidy them up. And then when we usually kind of get to a smaller gig, maybe a small nightclub gig for just for 100 people or so, then we'll probably try them out. It's a bit harder if you're at a big gig where it's like a 1,000 people and they know your songs, you kind of can't afford to drop the new ones, but uh, in a tour like this, there's always going to be one or two small gigs where you can uh, have a go at dropping something fresh. Just the whole environment of being on the, on the road, experiencing new things to eat, from real basic levels to being at festivals and checking out other acts that you admire and getting to hear some freaky stuff. All of it thrown into the pot definitely inspires you, especially you know, to get back home and get back on the gear and start writing some new stuff. And even on the road, 
we kind of try and keep a culture of having gear set up as much as we can, always working on fresh beats. Sometimes it's not it's not just blatantly listening to other wicked bands. It's just everything about being on a tour and new experiences that kind of inspires new music, I reckon. Stop the shit up, man. Yeah. Very ancient Māori, uh, very, very ancient Māori uh, love. Uh, aye, 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 mō te 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 na. Oh. Yeah, aye, aye. Well, we're off to a little town, a little village, uh, which is called um, over there. <laughs> Loka Rotondo, that's all right. Loka Rotondo. Um, yeah, we're going to play in this, I don't know what it's going to be like, but it'll be really cool, I reckon. It's like uh, the traditional village styles. When I say that, I to Get all the grandmas out of their homes after siesta. We were sitting down there the other day, me and, uh, and Flash, just having a cup, cup of coffee, thinking, bro, you know, our great, our, our ancestors just marched through here, right? Eh? You know, and we were like, yeah, man, it's, it's a wicked, you know, wicked feeling knowing that they came through here representing, you know, Maori Aotearoa. Right? It's like during the war, and like it was a very magical, magical moment. I'm the first one in, in my family and my whole family Iwi, to actually uh, travel the world doing music. And it's something that, that all my uncles and, great, grand, and grandfather and grandmother, all that, all wanted to do something like that. And um, when I come on tour with the boys, I represent my whole whanau. I suppose if you drop the Māori charm in the middle of Italy, people go, Whoa! Oh, that, I would love it. <laughs> but, I, I, man, wouldn't surprise if it actually started. Boys probably did it in the war, during the war. The Māori Battalion, man, they would probably talk to all these fellas how to do it here. Jing, jiki, jing, jiki. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's how you do it, bro. Propongo anche questa sera una canzone dei Fat Pretty Drop, come al solito una canzone che dura un sacco di tempo, 8 minuti, ma c'è una ragione per cui duri così tanto e ve ne accorgerete semplicemente ascoltando. 